Hello everyone and welcome to Exxon Academy and our deep dive into Chapter 1 of the Cambridge O-Level and IGCSE Environmental Management Syllabus, Rocks and Minerals. In this video, we'll explore what rocks and minerals are, how they form and transform through the rock cycle, the methods used to extract them and the environmental and social impacts of these processes. We'll also discuss, sustain uh, we'll also discuss sustainable practices to ensure these resources are managed responsibly. Whether you're studying for exams or simply curious about how our planet works, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Slide 1.1. Let's start with the basics. Minerals are naturally occurring inorganic substances that have a fixed chemical composition and a crystalline structure. For example, quartz is a common mineral prized for its hardness and clarity. In contrast, rocks are aggregates of one or more minerals. They sometimes include organic material. A well-known example is granite, which is composed primarily of quartz, feldspar and mica. Gran granite is renowned for its durability and is widely used in construction. Understanding these distinctions is essential as we move into the rock cycle. Slide 2.1 Overview of the Rock Cycle A never-ending process that continuously transforms rocks over millions of years. The cycle involves several key processes. Weathering Rocks are broken down into smaller particles by physical, chemical or biological means. Then comes erosion. These particles are transported by natural forces like wind or water. Deposition Sediments eventually settle and accumulate in layers. Then comes compression and cementation. Over time, the accumulated sediments are compressed and cemented together to form sedimentary rocks. Then comes heat and pressure. When sedimentary rocks are subjected to high temperatures and pressures, they transform into metamorphic rocks. And then finally comes melting and cooling as the final phase. If rocks melt into magma and then cool, they form igneous rocks. For instance, imagine a river carrying sediments that eventually deposit to form sandstone. Later, this sandstone might be transformed into slate through heat and pressure. This cycle constantly reshapes the Earth's surface. Slide 2.2 Types of Rocks Rocks are classified into three main types. Number 1. Igneous Rocks These are formed when magma or lava cools and solidifies. For example, granite is an igneous rock known for its coarse grain texture and durability, while basalt, while basalt is a fine-grained rock formed from lava flows. Number 2. Sedimentary rocks. These form from the accumulation and compression of sediments. Limestone, which is composed primarily of calcium carbonate from marine organisms, is a classic example, and sandstone is formed from compacted sand. Number 3. Metamorphic rocks. When existing rocks are exposed to intense heat and pressure, they change into metamorphic rocks. Marble, which forms from limestone, is highly valued for its use in sculpture and architecture and slate, derived from shale, is commonly used for roofing. Each rock type has its unique characteristics and uses, which not only reveal the Earth's history, but also have practical applications in our daily lives. Slide 3.1 Methods of Extraction After learning how rocks form, we move on to how we extract these valuable resources. There are two primary methods. Number 1. Surface Mining This method includes open pit and strip mining where large volumes of overlying material are removed to access minerals near the surface. It is commonly used for coal or iron ore. Number two is surface and the other method is subsurface mining. When mineral deposits are located deep underground, shaft mining or deep mining is used. This technique is often employed for extracting precious metals like gold. The choice of mining method depends on several factors such as the location and depth of the resource, how accessible it is, the market demand and the potential environmental impact. For example, while surface mining can be cost effective, it often causes significant ecological disruption. Slide 3.2 Environmental and Social Impacts Mining has a dual impact on society and the environment. On the positive side, it creates jobs, stimulates economic growth and often leads to the development of infrastructure like roads and schools. However, there are negative impacts as well. Leading with habitat destruction, mining can lead to deforestation and the loss of wildlife habitats. Then comes pollution. 
It can cause water and air pollution, affecting local communities and ecosystems. And it also has waste disposal issues. The process of mining generates a significant amount of waste material that must be managed properly. For instance, coal mining in Appalachia has provided crucial employment and energy resources. But it has also been linked to environmental issues such as deforestation and water pollution. Slide number 4.1 Sustainable Extraction and Recycling As we face increasing resource demands, sustainable practices have become essential. Sustainable extraction means using modern technologies and methods that minimize environmental damage. Recycling plays a crucial role. By recovering and reusing minerals from old products like electronics, we can reduce the need for new mining. Governments also enforce strict regulations and require environmental impact assessments, also known as EIAs, to ensure that mining operations minimize harm to ecosystems and communities. For example, many countries now mandate land restoration after mining requiring companies to replant vegetation and rehabilitate the area, which helps to mitigate long-term environmental damage. Responsible mining and resource management systems bring significant benefits. Mining generates substantial revenue through taxes and royalties, which can be reinvested in public services and infrastructure improvements. And the social benefits, and as social benefits, it creates jobs and helps improve living standards in local communities. For instance, in regions where mining is well regulated, local infrastructure such as roads, schools and hospitals often see considerable improvements, directly benefiting the community. Let's recap what we've covered in Chapter 1. Rocks and minerals form the foundation of our planet. They are created, transformed and recycled through the dynamic rock cycle. We explored the three main rock types, igneous rocks like granite, sedimentary rocks such as limestone and metamorphic rocks like marble. We examined extraction methods including surface and subsurface mining and discussed their economic benefits as well as the environmental and social challenges they pose. Finally, we highlighted the importance of sustainable practices including modern extraction techniques, recycling and strict environmental, legisl and strict environmental legislation to ensure that these valuable resources are used responsibly. This foundational knowledge is essential, not only for your exams, but also for understanding how human activities and natural processes interact on our planet. And that concludes our comprehensive exploration of Chapter 1, Rocks and Minerals. I hope this video has provided you with a clear understanding of how rocks and minerals form, how they are extracted, and the importance of sustainable management in protecting our environment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more in-depth lessons, and leave any questions or comments below. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your studies. See you in the next video.